Praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning. God is so good. Amen. Hallelujah. It's great to be alive, to be in God's kingdom, to be led and directed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so, so good. Amen. Well, um, why am I here? <laughs> Let me just give you a little, this, to me this is really special. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge the founding pastors, Pastors Wayne and Margaret. <laughs> Amen. So appreciate their lives and ministry in my life, which started about 50 years ago. <laughs> and uh, so thankful for Pastors Matt and Rachel. Uh, amen. Um, appreciate Pastor Matt's leadership. Um, he's a husband first, father second, and pastor third. So you get that out of order, you got problems. I'd also like to acknowledge his sons, two of whom work for me, Tyler and Ethan. And when people work for you or do business with you or rent from you, you get an idea of what they're like. And, I, and, Pastor, Matt, and Pastor Rachel have done a tremendous job. We're so honored to have these young men a part of our team for a while, anyhow. <laughs> Amen. So, um, at the end of last month, actually I checked my text, I had been communicating with Pastor Matt, uh, he was calling and texting about some things over at the Outreach Center and the new property and how that's going to get rented out and all those types of details. And then he texted back, oh, I forgot to ask you, would you be willing to preach on the 23rd? So I quickly checked the calendar, make sure we're actually going to physically be here. And uh, sure, we'd be honored to do that. So then uh, a couple days later, I was coming down to church for prayer and knowing that I would be, be ministering, and the word intercession just dropped into my heart. And so I just began to pray into it, uh, began to, you know, think about some scriptures in regards to intercession. And then uh, a few days after that, if you were here, July 5th for our first Wednesday meeting, what did Pastor Matt minister on? Intercession. Now you need to understand, when Pastor Matt asked me to preach, he didn't even mention at all a topic or anything. No communication whatsoever between us as to what the Lord was putting on his heart and on my heart. Very encouraging to me. You don't want to be out in left field someplace. <laughs> so so I, I, I just, you know, and more and more as I'm praying and just waiting on the Lord, I'm beginning to see these things happen, these coincidences, <laughs> these occurrences. And so I'm just so grateful for God's confirmation. We're happy, so happy to be here. It's always an honor to be able to share God's word. It's eternal. It's infallible. God's word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. We cannot live without God's word. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, <clears throat> intercession. I think it's probably important that we define the word intercession. When we, in our circles, when we mention intercession, the first thing that comes to mind is prayer, intercessory prayer. But let me just kind of give you Hopefully this will expand your thinking a little bit in terms of intercession. Um, and also I want to say right up front, the intercession is not for an elite few, but it's for every member of the body of Christ. And as I share these things, I think you're going to see that, well, I guess I have been involved in intercession at some level. Amen. So intercession is not prim primarily a prayer a person prays, but something a person does that can be done through prayer. The Hebrew word intercession, paga, P-A-G-A, means to meet. Intercession creates a meeting, hence the prayer meeting. 
<laughs> so, um, so intercede also means to go or pass between, to act between parties with a view to reconcile those who differ or contend, to mediate or make intercession. Intercession happens daily with lawyers interceding for their clients. Intercession happens in contractual meetings. There's a representative. There's the, the, the architect's representative, whatever. Uh, but there's intercession going on. So intercession happens in offices, business meetings, daily, as secretaries and other associates go between representing one to the other. <clears throat> it involves delegation, authority, representation. So any work of representation or mediation between is intercession. So let me give you a couple of examples. Um, as most of you know, um, our son and daughter-in-law, uh, Tim and Kelly, are inv involved with foster care and adoption. That's intercession. These children were in situations where they desperately need somebody to step in, to intercede. And of course, there's a whole process uh, involved in uh, being a foster parent. And, but it's, it's intercession. You're interceding. I mean, you're, 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 you're stepping in where the biological mother and father, for whatever reason, not able. Just not able. Sometimes they're incarcerated. Sometimes they're... they're addicted to drugs, and just not able. So that's an example of, of um, intercession. And I, I'm, I'm, I want to say that it's been such a blessing to our entire family to be a part of that process. And I know different ones in our assembly have made, made meals for, for the Tim and Kelly and so greatly appreciate that. Amen. But you are involved at some level in interceding and taking care of. Another area is mentoring or coaching. And uh, <clears throat> my other son, Jeff, has been, I know, I think Tim has been involved in coaching as well, but just recently, uh, Jeff's been involved with coaching um, with his son's um, basketball team and also his football team. And so there's, there's a level of intercession that's going on. Some of these young guys uh, don't have a father or they're in a very precarious situation. And so this is a hands-on way of interceding, stepping in and trying to encourage and many times walking them back from the ledge, if you will, and helping them to deal with their emotions and all the things that they're dealing with. <clears throat> Another example, I just want to put this out there. How many have seen um, the movie uh, Sound of Freedom? Okay, most of you, and if you haven't seen it yet, you need to see it. And um, it's just an international uh, thing of intercession. And it has to do with uh, sex trafficking with children. And um, so there's an there's a organization called Operation Underground Railroad, and that's what the movie's about. But I think to date, um, this operation... Underground Railroad has saved 6,000 children. And so the movie is, is so powerful and so compelling, and it's, it's an international problem. And so, I, again, I'm just putting that plug in. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. And then once you see it, you need to pray, Lord, how can I be involved? What can I do in, in terms of intercession and praying and giving or whatever it might be? So these are just some very practical ways that we're in, we, we are involved in intercession. Um, of course, if you're a parent, you're involved in intercession. <laughs> you're going to raise these little ones. You will give an account before God on how you've raised them. So there's prayer involved. There's interceding. And there's, you know, stepping in between. <laughs> Amen. So let me give you uh, some scriptural examples that are very powerful. And um, I'm going to start with um, 
in, he, in Psalms uh, 106, verse 21, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done such great things in Egypt, such wonderful things in the land of Ham, such awesome deeds at the Red Sea. So he, God, declared he would destroy them. But Moses, his chosen one, stepped between the Lord and the people. Now think about this. Stepping between the creator of the universe. And he begged him to turn from his anger and not destroy them. Such a powerful, powerful uh, example of intercession. So let me read more detail in that account. And this is in uh, Numbers uh, 14. So... Um, Again, this is what we just read in Psalms 106. But Moses' objection objected. So this, again, this is more detailed, more of the backstory of what's happening, of what had happened. What will the Egyptians think when they hear about it? What will the unbelievers, what will the heathen think and say if you wipe out your people? He asked the Lord, they know full well the power you displayed in rescuing your people from Egypt. Now, if you destroy them, the Egyptians will send a report to the inhabitants of this land who have already heard that you live among your people. They know, Lord, that you've appeared to your people face to face and that your pillar of cloud hovers over them. They know that you go before them in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Now, if you slaughter all these people with a single blow, the nations that have heard of your fame will say, the Lord was not able to bring them into the land which he swore to give them, so he killed them in the wilderness. Whew, that is powerful. But to me, that gives me great hope assurance and confidence for our nation. Amen. We stand upon the word of God. What will the heathen say? You are not able to keep and bring your people in. And so the Lord, <clears throat> so he said, please, Lord, prove that your power is as great as you have claimed. For you said, the Lord is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion. Amen. Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested. Wow. Isn't that something? But this is an example. This is a pattern of how we intercede. Interceding for people, our loved ones, our families. Um, that are out there, that are bound by sin and addictions of every kind. Amen. We're not giving up. We're going to take the principles of God's word and apply them in those situations. Lord, your mercies are new this morning. Lord, you're not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to salvation. And so we intercede. We stand between the Lord and that person, or we stand between the Lord and our nation. We're deserving of God's wrath and of God's judgment. But as his people, we stand between him and that judgment. So this is a powerful, powerful pattern and example of what we're called to do um, as God's people. And again, let me, let me emphasize, every one of you are called to be an intercessor. To go between, to stand before the Lord and that person or that situation, you're called to intercede. Amen. Let me give you um, another portion of Scripture here. This is in Ezekiel uh, 22. Again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give the people of Israel this message. In the day of my indignation, you will be like a polluted land, a land without rain. Your princes plot conspiracies, just as lions stalk their prey. Of course, princes would be leaders. A lot of this is going to sound familiar <laughs> as to what we're going through in our nation. Amen. They devour innocent people, seizing treasures and extorting wealth. 
they make many widows in the land. Your priests, your ministers, have violated my instructions and defiled my holy things. They make no distinction between what is holy and what is not. And they do not teach my people the difference between what is ceremonially, ceremonially clean and unclean. Folks, we're living through this. There's whole churches and whole groups of people that can't name sin, that don't know that there's a biological man and a biological woman. In the beginning, God created male and female. And so it's why it's important that we know the scriptures, we know the word of God, and be able to articulate our stand according to the scriptures. Yes, we love everybody. Yes, we love sinners. But what are we pointing them to? Are we just loving them and allowing them to stay in their sin and bound by perversion and wrong thinking? No. Amen. We've got to be intercessors. Uh, <clears throat> they disregard my Sabbath day so that I am dishonored among them. Your leaders are like wolves who tear apart their victims. They actually destroy people's lives for money. Now, I often say, you know, why are they doing that? I say, just follow the money. <laughs> there's, amen, there's, there's, there's somewhere, there's compensation, there's money involved in the whole thing. So this is what we, this is what we know. Amen. Um, <clears throat> and your prophets cover up for them by announcing false visions and making lying predictions. They say, my message is from the sovereign Lord when the Lord hasn't spoken a single word to them. Even common people oppress the poor, rob the needy, and deprive foreigners of justice. Now, I want to focus on this last portion of this last verse. I looked, this is the Lord speaking, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap in the wall so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. So my question, I mean, this to me, this, this evokes a question. If God is just going to do it all by himself, why would it be necessary to look and to search for somebody to stand in the gap, to intercede? Okay? And there's other scriptures that you know, really back this up. I looked for someone. I searched for someone to stand in the gap so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. I'm just, I'm here, I just, I'm just convinced that God is moving in a powerful way and we, we talk about this weekly as we gather in our prayer group. God, there's a great shaking that's underway. There's a great, great awakening that's happening in the body of Christ. There's a great alignment that's taking place and a stirring. And there's a fire in my heart. Amen. Lord, I want to do what you've called me to do. I want to be. I want to have my heart positioned, my life positioned, that I can be a channel and a blessing for the, the power of the Spirit to flow through me. And so it is necessary. I mean, judgment and wrath will be poured out unless somebody stands up, unless there's a group of people. It only takes a remnant. I mean, you just read the scriptural account. It just takes a remnant, and God can work with that. So I'm, I'm here to report that it's happening all across the nation. You won't hear about this on CNN or, or MSNBC, but if you're, too, if you're dialed in, uh, there, there's, there's ways to get that information. There's some tremendous things that are happening, and amen. I, I, there's a scripture that came to to light just this week, um, the Lord will take the wise in their own craftiness. So when they think they've won, when they think that their agenda is completely pushed through, in a moment, God is going to turn things around. Um, that doesn't mean there won't still be work to do, but uh, we're, we're just trusting in God. We're thanking God for his faithfulness, thanking him for the witness of his word that we're standing, and we're standing between, we're mediating. Yes, Lord, we're deserving of wrath, of your, uh, your outpouring of your wrath, but we say, Lord, have mercy, have mercy. Uh, I think Second Chronicles 7.14 says, 
uh, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. What a tremendous promise. Amen? And you know, this is a promise that applies to us and our families and our homes and, you know, wayward children and situations that, that just weigh so heavily upon us. Let's stay on the off- offense. Amen? I mean, sometimes you've got to play defense, but you score b- pr- primarily on offense. True? Amen? <laughs> so let's, let's not get in our bunker or our foxhole, and we're just kind of waiting till Jesus comes, and he's going to whisk us all out of here. I just don't believe that, folks. I just don't, I just don't think, in, on the, on what, according to the scriptures we've just read, then the Lord is not able to bring us in. The Lord is not able to do what he said he was going to do. But we know he can, and he will. But there's a part that we have to play as his people. We humble ourselves, we pray, we seek the Lord, we press in, we do not give up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me continue here. Um, One more, uh, a New Testament uh, reference to uh, intercession. So this is the Lord talking to Peter. He says, Peter, my dear friend, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Satan has obtained permission to come and sift you all like wheat and test your faith. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this. After you have turned back to me and have been restored, make it your life mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. That's Jesus. Amen. That's a tremendous example. Amen. I've prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you've turned back to me, strengthen your brethren. Amen. Hallelujah. So there's another aspect of intercessory prayer that is tremendously important, and that is watchmen. So let me give you a couple of scriptures and how this all, all this ties together. Um, in, in Isaiah 62, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silence and give him, the Lord, no rest until he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for the church. If you're a part of the body of Christ, you're, you're a part of the greatest thing that's happening on planet Earth. God himself stepped out of eternity, took upon him the form of a servant, gave his life for us, for the church, amen, and redeemed us with his own blood. Don't think for a moment that he's turning it over to the devil. Don't think for a moment that we're not going to come through victorious. Amen? Hallelujah. Watchmen on the walls. So, what is, what is, let's define the term watchman. Watchman comes from a Hebrew word, shamar, which means to hedge about, guard, protect, attend to, keep, have charge of, to keep within bounds, restrain. So part of the job of the watchman is not, is not only to warn people of Incoming, you know, the, the enemy, but also to be aware, to be alert, to be on guard. Because our adversary, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. So, let me give you another scripture where this same word is found, but it's not translated watchman. And this is found in the second chapter of Genesis, verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of eden to keep and or to tend and keep it this word keep is the same hebrew word shamar as watchman translated in isaiah uh, 62 so then you say well what is adam guarding against what is what does he have to be on guard for everything is perfect right well the next chapter Genesis 3, the first verse, gives us a pretty clear clue as to what he's on guard for. Now, the serpent was more cunning 
than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So this word cunning means crafty, subtle, sly. It comes from a root word meaning to be bare or smooth. And sometimes you've, you've heard people say, he or she, that's, he's a smooth operator. <laughs> and that's what it's, we've said that, and we've, we've experienced people like that. It's just like something's not quite like adding up, this smooth operator. So there's something that uh, I wanted to point out here. There's a, there's a principle in Scripture called the law of first mention. So the devil is first mentioned in this third chapter of Genesis, And it tells you what he's like. He's crafty. He's subtle. He's cunning. He comes in through the back door and accuses God to you like, well, has God really said that? Is he holding something out on you? This is how the enemy works. So we've got to be watchmen. And so, um, and I think Pastor Pastor Wayne actually mentioned this last week. In Ephesians 6, put on the whole armor of God that you may may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I mean, he's he's basically a one-trick pony. That's what he does. It's just deceptive. It's deceitful. There's cunning involved. And so, well, how do we overcome? How do we see through those things? It's by staying immersed in the Word of God. Praying in the Spirit, having a life of prayer and in the Word. And amen. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We must have God's Word. Amen. Must feed upon the Word of God. Amen. It has been said Satan is far more dangerous as the serpent than as the roaring lion. Think about that. Just just think about that for a moment. Just kind of coming in, very sly, very slick, smooth operator, you know, making accusations and saying things that are absolutely contrary to Scripture. There are things that are being said in our culture that they're just plain wrong (laughs) to start with. They're plain foolishness. And so how do we know that? Because of God's word, because of what he's spoken. He's given us the witness of his word. Hallelujah. So the main point is to keep the devil out of the garden in the first place. And and secondly, you shouldn't be listening to talking snakes. I mean, think about it. (laughs) We got some talking snakes out there, folks. Why are we listening to them? Why are we giving heed? Why are we giving into fear and doubt and unbelief? Amen? There's talking snakes. <laughs> but we know God's word. And we know God's plan, his purpose, his destiny for his church, for his people. Amen? You know what God is doing in the earth, he has chosen to do through the church. And really that word church uh, it, it comes from a Greek word, ekklesia, or ek- ekklesia. It's really a, a legislative body. We're here to rule and to reign with Jesus. Amen. To enforce the victory of Calvary. That's why we're here. Amen. <clears throat> so we want to. So the devil is after our gardens, our homes, our families, our children our cities, and our nation. We're in, a, we're in a battle. We're in a war. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, those things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Amen. Our weapons are mighty through God. Hallelujah. Okay. In closing, I want to kind of help. I want to tie these thoughts together. Uh, We've talked about intercession, what that means uh, in a a physical and spiritual sense, both ways, where we were called to that intercessory role. We really are. We we must be watchmen. We cannot be asleep at the wheel. If we're asleep, the devil's going to rip you off. (laughs) You're going to be sucked into this vortex 
of nonsense and foolishness that we see happening in our culture. You, you will not be able to stand up or resist it if, you, if you're not staying strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Staying in the word, staying in prayer, and then praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> so we've seen that a watchman is a position of critical importance. Again, if, if, we're, if we're asleep, if we don't pay attention, whew, boom, we're going to get ripped off. <clears throat> You've all seen a herd, maybe you have family members. You know, the man comes home and all of a sudden the house is empty. His wife is gone. She cleaned. And he was asleep, unaware that anything was wrong in his relationship. Wow, that's really asleep. <laughs> that somewhere along the line there wasn't signs that there were problems in your relationship. That you should have really got before God and cried out to him for his mercy and help. Amen. <laughs> You know, this is why prayer and spending time alone with God is extremely important. I'm convinced that every follower of Jesus should have that alone time with God in prayer and in the Word. Amen? The Spirit and the Word agree. So every believer, everyone that names the name of Jesus every day, a time of prayer, seeking God, and a time in the Word, hearing what He has to say for that day. You know, all of us, we, have, we lead busy lives. There are things, there are duties, there are responsibilities that we attend to. But I'm here to say we can attend to those duties in the power of the Holy Spirit. We can be led by God's Spirit at work connecting with the people that we interface and connect with. We can be led by the Spirit of God. God can show up, but we've got to hear what he has to say. We've got to spend that time just in the, in the morning waiting upon him. Um, <clears throat> I also believe that he has secrets he wants to share with us. But you need to come to the secret place. You need to tune out the noise, shut off the, the device. I have a device. I've got a couple of them. I go to the Word first. I don't check my email. I don't check my text. I don't see what the news is happening that day. I go to the Word first, and so should you. <laughs> we want to hear from God. What are you saying, Lord? How do we walk in this present age. The grace of God has appeared to all men. It teaches us to deny ungodliness and unrighteousness and to live soberly in this present age. That's the grace of God. It teaches us. It instructs us. We must humble ourselves, amen, to receive that grace. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So when we humble ourselves and pray, amen, he'll show up. But if you have all the answers, okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> but if we'll come and say, Lord, I really need you today. Holy Spirit, come and lead me and guide me and direct. Amen. You know, and I'm, again, as I'm, I'm praying more and more, I just, things are happening. It's just like, wow. Just this, I think it was just this past week or week, last week, I was in prayer, and, uh, and, uh, and this particular man's face came before me, and I hadn't seen him um, I hadn't seen him in years. He worked uh, for a contractor that I used to do work for, but I haven't worked for them for years. And, of course, this man's since retired. And so I didn't think too much about it. I went to get my hair cut, and who walks in but this man? So I immediately stood up. I said, man, this must be a God appointment. He said, oh, sit down, sit down. But he didn't realize that I had just seen his face that, that morning. So, um, and he told me, I knew his wife had some physical things and they've, they've had to have a caregiver come in. And so I just knew I should begin to pray for this man. He's a believer, by the way. And so, um, you know, it's just things like that that are just like, man, this is like amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, 
But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, shut the door, shut out the noise, turn off the devices, focus on Jesus, listen, lean in, and God will speak. <clears throat> so you pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who is in secret will reward you openly. Wow. May his reward be, his, be our, may our reward be his presence, his voice speaking in our situation. The scripture says the voice of the Lord is powerful. I want to hear his voice. I want to be led and directed by the Spirit of God. Amen. The scripture says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And so I'm, I'm just putting this out there, folks. I believe um, there's so much that God wants to do through each and every one of you. Every follower and believer of Jesus. But you need to take the time. You need to put aside some things that are pressing in, crowding in. <laughs> I have to practice this. I was just talking to a, a pastor, and we're going to probably do some work for him. And um, as most of you know, I'm a painting contractor. He said, well, what do you got going on? Well, I said, I, have, I probably have six jobs going right now simultaneously. I mean, some are almost done, but there's, there's a lot of details. There's a lot of moving parts, you know. So but I've got to say, wait, pushing it aside. I'm going to listen. I want to hear what God is saying not only for me personally, but for my family, for the nation, for what God wants me to do here. You know, I want to hear. I want to be, I want to hear, and I want God to confirm it. It won't be just something that, well, I've got this feeling, but God will confirm it. Amen. So, I would encourage you all, again, shut out the noise of the world. Lean in to the Holy Spirit. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed what he's going to share with you. You'll be a little amazed about what he'll, he'll share with you about yourself. Because <laughs> different times, in the Holy Spirit, he's a gentleman. I'll go, ouch. I mean, I said that? I had that position? Ye, <laughs> forgive me. And what that does, what that does, that helps you be a lot more gracious and patient with other people. Because let's be honest, we don't see everything, we don't know everything. But he does. <laughs> <laughs> and so I want to be in communication with him. I need to hear his instructions. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your great love. Hallelujah. Amen. So, amen. Just in one, it's just so, in, so encourage you. Amen. So let me read something. I have an article that, I mean, Pastor Matt may have given it to me. I don't know, but I keep it right on my desk. From time to time, I'll just read it because it's so so powerful. And in this article, there's a quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Do, do you, any of you know who Dietrich Bonhoeffer was? I think most of the older folks do. Those of you who are younger, he was a German pastor, theologian, and martyr. When World War II was underway, he had come to the United States, but he felt led to go back to Germany to awaken the sleeping church. There was 12,000 pastors in Germany, and most of whom were asleep when Hitler was coming, to, to, uh, to, to, uh, coming into power. So anyhow, this article, uh, this quote from him. Whoever cannot be alone should be aware of community. Such people will only do harm to themselves and to the community. Alone you stood before God when, he, when God called you. Alone you had to obey his voice. Alone you had to take up your cross, struggle and pray, and alone you will die and give an account to God. You cannot avoid yourself, <laughs> for it is precisely God who has called you out. If you do not want to be alone, you're rejecting Christ's call to you. You can have no part in the community of those who are called. Now, I'm saying that in the context of getting along with God. I mean, obviously, we... we we need to gather together and fellowship and encourage one another. But let's get the alone time first. Because sometimes people want to offer their opinions and everything, and they're not that impressive, you know? Our opinions, they're not that impressive. <laughs> let's hear what 
This, I want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. That comes when you're alone with Him, when you've chosen to push things aside, and I'm, I'm going to press in. I'm going to stick with it. I'm not going to give up. It reminds me, years ago, Pastor Wayne, when we had morning prayer, first, the first week or two, there was probably a dozen, 15 people, then dwindles, dwindles, dwindles. <laughs> But I was in a situation in my life, I was hungry, I needed God, I needed God in my marriage, in my home, you know, we needed the Lord to really just, you know, you know, lead us, guide us. And so I want to encourage you, have that alone time with God. I encourage every young person, every young person, parents, encourage them, time in the word and time in prayer. Teach them, instruct them. Train them. I mean, this is how they're going to learn. But obviously, if you're going to teach and instruct, you need to be doing it yourself. <laughs> it's not too effective teaching somebody that you're not really living it yourself. So I'm encouraging you today. Amen. I'm exhorting today. I'm admonishing today. If you haven't established that time alone with God, I mean, you need to do it. Why would you want to miss out? Why? What, what do you have that's so important to do that day that you're going to blow past the creator of the universe? You're going to ignore the one who determines whether you live or die today. <laughs> Think about it. You know, it's like, whew. But you know, the Lord, the Lord desires an intimate relationship with each and every one of us. It's amazing to me. He sees everything in your life. There's nothing you could possibly hide from him. He knows you're down-sitting, you're uprising. He knows and understands your thoughts from afar off. But still, he wants a relationship with you. He still wants to reveal secrets to you. He wants to open things up for you about your family. Amen? Fathers, I want to speak to you. You've got a tremendous uh, responsibility, a tremendous role, a tremendous position of influence. Uh, and so I'm encourage you. Spend time along with God. Lead your families. Get along with God so he can speak. He can move through you. He can open up his word to you so that you can effectively lead your families. This is what God is doing. Amen. There's a stirring. There's a shaking underway. And we're, we've come to that place where, uh, you know, if it's only, only be God. <laughs> it won't be a, a movement or a political party that's going to turn things around. It won't be a, a, simply a movement that's going to revamp our educational establishment and shake that thing from top to bottom. It's happening, folks. It's happening. Amen. We want to see the influence of the gospel, of the word of God in every area and facet of our culture. But we individually, individually, we, we, we have to be a, have a long time with God. We got to be pressing and praying and seeking after him. Amen. And, and if, it's, if, it's just five, if it's just five minutes, start there. But if you've been at it for a while, then it should be 15 or half an hour. I mean, just push things aside. Get up earlier. <laughs> Amen. I'm just, I'm so excited because the more and more that I do this, I'm seeing the Lord show up. I'm seeing God just move. I'm seeing breakthroughs. And so I want to encourage you all. Amen. You're here. God's got a tremendous plan. He wants to use you. Amen. For the harvest that is before us. Jesus said the fields are white on the harvest. Every one of you, every single one of you that's follower of Jesus to be involved in the harvest, influencing, winning a soul. Just win, a, win one soul. Intercede for one soul. Pray until they come. Pray and cry out to God till you see a breakthrough. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Can we stand? Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to put the call out there. I really felt this this morning as I was in prayer. If you just want to come down and um, you might not have any particular need, but you've been 
convicted or moved upon concerning this message and you're, you're here to say, well, Lord, I want to I want to I want to get into this. I want to buy into this. I mean, it's not that you're not praying, but maybe there's another level that God's calling you to to spend time with him. So I want to invite you to come down. If you're here and you've got something physically wrong, I'm here to tell you God will heal you. Amen. He will confirm his word with signs following. We'll lay hands on you and you'll be healed. Amen. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. So why don't you come if you've, if you've got needs, if you just want somebody to stand with you and pray. The prayer team's coming. But I just want to really encourage each and every one of you that this week to make that commitment, amen, to really press into God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you. Uh, that, Lord, you've called us to be watchmen. You've called us to be intercessors. We thank you, Lord God, that as we do, as we give ourselves to you in prayer, that, Lord, you're moving in a powerful way. And so, Father, we thank you for your goodness, your love, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everyone. This is Anthony. Thank you for joining us at River Valley Church. It's our hope and prayer that this message blesses and encourages you in your walk with Jesus. If it's done that today, we ask that you like this message and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to click that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that's posted. If God's place is on your heart to give today, there's a link in the description where you can get all of that information. We ask that you also follow our social channels here at River Valley Church so that you can stay connected with everything that's happening here at the church and also in our community. Most importantly, if you need prayer, we ask that you click on the next step section of our website where you'll find a prayer request form and you can fill out as much or as little as you want. But we've got some awesome men and women who are ready to stand with you in your time of need. That's all for today. Thank you again for joining us at River Valley Church. Have a great week. God bless.